I actually have no problem with Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi. I actually really liked the movie Star Wars The Last Jedi, and this video's title and troll thumbnail was just trying to make you click on it so that your expectations can be subverted. Bye now! Okay, jokes aside, even though I'm not lying when I say I did like Luke in Episode 8, but I fully admit The Last Jedi has a lot of problems, and I understand why so many people did not like it. I think there was still room for improvement, and this video will feature my ideas on how to do it. This video should be really titled Improving Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi, but whatever. Also, I think this is the perfect opportunity to make this video since the finale of The Mandalorian Season 2 just happened while I'm writing the script. So a spoiler warning for all recent Star Wars stuff. Let's get started. Kidum. When Episode 8 hit theaters, the portrayal of Luke Skywalker in the movie was one of the biggest topics to talk about and fight over on the internet. There were fanboys dismayed by Luke's appearance on the movie, there were also people championing Luke's portrayal. It is still such a highly debated topic, Luke being a bitter old man who has many regrets about his failures. Because I was Luke Skywalker, Jedi Master. The actor Mark Hamill seemed pretty unhappy of how the movie turned out. And on, th on this one, uh, it was similar in the sense that I said to Ryan, I'm so surprised how you see Luke. He probably wished Luke to be a wise old Jedi like he was in the books and comics of the old canon. Did your vision and Ryan's vision, did it coincide with the way that Luke ends up in this film that, that you thought it would all these years later? But even though I respect the hell out of Mark Hamill and he is also my personal Jesus Christ considering that I am a Star Wars and DC Comics fanboy and he's a big part of both franchises, but I'm sorry Mr. Mark Hamill, you are wrong. Luke is supposed to have a story arc in the movie and it's about learning from our mistakes and character flaws make stories more interesting. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'll start by summarizing the movie from the beginning to the end step by step and see what really happened in The Last Jedi in the perspective of Luke Skywalker, so it will be easier to dissect this mess of a movie. Ugh, it's rewatch time! Let's summarize what happened. So before the events of Force Awakens, Luke was running a Jedi Order but realized that Ben Solo was turning bad. He thought about killing him in his sleep, but he hesitated, but Ben Solo thought his master was trying to kill him, and then caused Order 66 Season 2. Ben joined Snoke, who turned out to be Palpatine's personal sock puppet in the next movie, and then became an emo kid fixated on a helmet named Kylo Ren. A disheartened Luke ran away to the planet Octo. Then in his absence, the Empire came back somehow and built a planet killer machine, because J.J. Abrams have no original creative bone in his body. But a nobody girl named Rey managed to find him and tries to bring him back and train her. Rey tries to give the lightsaber but he throws it away. And refuses. You don't need Luke Skywalker. You think that I came to the most unfindable place in the galaxy for no reason at all? Go away. He tries to gross her out by doing... I think I can make an hour length video on how awful Ryan Johnson's sense of humor is and I think The Last Jedi's audience score on Rotten Tomatoes would have gone up 10% if the scene was cut but that's a whole another topic so moving on. Anyways then R2D2 plays him the footage of his sister saying Help me Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. The video that started Luke's journey. Luke changes his mind and tells Rey that he will teach her three lessons about why the Jedi's suck. Three lessons. Even though in the movie he only teaches her two lessons. In the first lesson, in my personal second favorite scene of the movie because it's really shot well, he teaches her what the Force is and during that scene, Rey figures out that Luke has sealed himself away from the Force. You've closed yourself off from the Force. In the second lesson, he teaches her that the Jedi's in the prequels were hypocritical dicks. The legacy of the Jedi is failure, hypocrisy, hubris. That's not true. At the height of their powers, they allowed Darth Sidious to rise, create the Empire, and wipe them out. And he was absolutely correct. Q 
cute clips of Mace Window being a hypocritical dick. Take a seat, young Skywalker. I'm sorry, citizen. These matters are for the council to discuss. He has control of the Senate and the courts. He's too dangerous to be left alive. But anyways, Luke then sort of lies to Rey of how Ben tried to kill him, and he thinks he failed. I failed. Then Rey forced Discord calls Kylo, and then here's his side of the story. Luke tells her the truth of what happened that night. He would bring destruction and pain and death at the end of everything I love because of what he will become. And for the briefest moment of pure instinct, I thought I could stop it. Then Rey leaves disappointed that Luke won't teach her. Then he's our lost hope. Luke then tries to burn down the tree that contains all of the Wikipedia articles, but then Yoda appears and talks to Luke in my personal favorite scene in the movie, and teaches Luke that... Failure also. Yes, failure, most of all. The greatest teacher failure is. Then, after the most awkward kiss ever put on a motion picture, it seems all hope is lost for Leia and the Resistance Army. Our distress signal has been received at multiple points, but no response. But then Luke Force projects himself thousands of light years away, says goodbye to Leia, and then stalls enough time by trolling Kylo so the Resistance and Rey can escape. After that, Luke dies, for some reason, after a beautifully shot scene with him looking out towards the twin sons. It wasn't sadness or pain, it was peace and purpose. Then Rey and like 10 surviving Resistance army people barely escape, and even though they lost all of their ships and their entire fleet except the Falcon, somehow in the next movie they're back up and running a fleet. What went wrong? Or more like why were so many displeased? So that's what happened in the movie and boy there was outrage. People were expecting Luke like he was in the season finale of The Mandalorian. Using his green lightsaber, doing crazy action scenes, being wise, and being a badass. But Ryan didn't want to give the audience what it wanted, and instead we got a very different story. The Last Jedi left some fans shocked by Luke Skywalker's story and ending. Looking back, would you change anything in your script, or do you stand by all your choices? No, nope, stand by every choice. I was able to narrow down to three story moments why I think so many people are not satisfied with the portrayal of Luke. I'm gonna critique these three story moments of Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi to see if it was a bad or a good decision by Ryan, and tell my opinions on it, and if it's necessary, how to improve it or fix it. The three moments are starting with... Just cut that damn scene out, Ryan. You're unfunnier than an Adam Sandler comedy. <clears throat> Anyways, for real though, number one, Luke tries to kill his nephew even though Luke once saw the goodness in Darth Vader and redeemed him, then abandons Leia and the Resistance because he thought he failed and runs away to a remote island in Ireland. Number two, Luke actually doesn't fight Kylo on Krayt and just trolls him, while using that power to troll him kills him for some reason. Number 3, Luke died so that an elderly woman and a few people could survive, which makes it seem like an unsatisfactory death. It seems these story moments made nerds go insane. Part 1. Out of character versus character making mistakes. I'll start by addressing number 1, Luke almost killing Ben Solo. Many people say that this is totally out of character of Luke to even have the slightest thought about murdering his nephew. Well, here's the thing. I think there is a big difference between a character acting out of character and character making mistakes. I believe that if you're gonna make a story set after the happily ever after ending of Return of the Jedi, there is no choice but to make your perfect character go through some more hardships and even have him make mistakes. Like if Luke was still the same way as he was at the end of episode 6 in the sequel trilogy, the story would be very boring, honestly. Rey shows up, says to Luke, Hey, we need you! Luke then says, okay and then comes along and kills Snoke and Kylo, and the movie will be over in 10 minutes. I think what? I'm gonna walk out with a laser sword and face down the whole First Order? In my humble opinion, making your characters go through trials and tribulations make the movie more entertaining. Why the need for so much depressing character development? Why not 
let us imagine. Because it's a little so bit. much fun, Chan. Get really? it. But here's the million dollar question. Was it out of character for Luke to attack his nephew? In my opinion, you can have your hero make a mistake and fail, as long as that mistake makes the hero face the consequences and feel bad about it. And I was left with shame. And with consequence. An actual out of character Luke Skywalker would be if Luke didn't feel any remorse after almost killing his nephew and be indifferent about it. And then says to Ben, grow up kid, you suck, and I didn't do anything wrong. You deserve to be murdering you fuck. Say hello to my little green friend. No, in the real movie, Luke says, I failed you, Ben. I'm sorry. That's also why I think the Finn and Rose subplot was so terrible. Because even though they failed in their mission because they trusted a guy that literally talks like a snake, which caused them many resistant deaths. Sorry, I just couldn't help but overhear all the stuff that you were saying really loudly. We checked on the information from the thief. We ran a decloaking scan and sure enough, 30 resistance transports have just launched from the cruiser. Admiral, we're taking fire! Do we turn around? No, you're too far out! Full speed to planet Falls! Full speed! They act like they didn't do anything wrong and don't seem to show any sign of regret and didn't learn anything from it. Oh, is this all that's left? The greatest teacher failure is... No, Finn and Rose didn't learn anything. Escape? He's one man against an army. We have to help him, we have to no, fight. No, no. Let's look at another case similar to this. Batman pulling out a gun and killing people in Zack Snyder's god-awful DC comic movies. Shots fired at those Snyder fanboys. The problem is not the fact that Batman is killing people. The problem is that Batman doesn't realize that he's doing something wrong and therefore is acting out of character because the guy who made the movie doesn't realize it's bad because he has never read a real Batman book from start to end. I would say, you know, in the, in the Frank Miller comic book that I, that I reference, you know, he kills all the time, right? The Dark Knight Returns, the, the book where Batman takes the gun, breaks it over his leg and says, these are the weapons of cowards. Good lord, I should make a video on the train wreck that is the DC Extended Universe when the Snyder Cut comes out. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that Ryan tried to make Luke go through a character arc. He goes from depressed and cynical to sad after Ray leaves him, and then snaps out of it when Yoda talks to him. Skywalker, still looking to the horizon. Never hear that. Hmm? The need in front of your. And then saves the day in the end. That being said, I think the reason why so many people were still outraged is because it didn't feel like Luke completed his arc by the end of the movie. Even though I disagree, I can understand why people think Luke is not back to his old self when he confronts Kylo. And that's because there wasn't the real big story moment that shows Luke is sane again. Like, I feel like there's a scene missing between the scene with Yoda and the scene where he confronts Kylo, where the audience can get definite proof that Luke Skywalker, the legend, is indeed back. A turning point in the arc, if you will. So, here's how we're gonna fix it. You know that scene in the next movie where Luke catches his old lightsaber? A Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. Many people thought that it was J.J. Abrams flipping off the bird to Ryan Johnson. Oh man, how was that uh, as a fuck you to Ryan Johnson when Luke Skywalker shows up in this? And she, uh, Ray tries to oh, throw yeah. her lightsaber away and he catches it? He's like, this is the most fucking important thing ever. And he looked right at the camera and flipped off Ryan Johnson. But I disagree. It was meant to show that Luke was no longer a cynical old man and back to his old self. However, I think this scene should have not been saved for the next movie, but it should have been in The Last Jedi. Luke catching the lightsaber. If we add that scene of Luke catching the lightsaber between the Yoda scene and the final confrontation, I think fans would have gotten the confirmation that Luke Skywalker is really back. For this to happen, I think the solution is pretty straightforward. Instead of Rey and Kylo splitting the lightsaber in half in the throne room scene, have Rey escape with the lightsaber intact. Instead of her reuniting with Chewie somehow and having that awful out of tone scene on the Falcon, <laughs> like this. let's have her land on Crate on a Snoke ship or whatever alongside Finn and Rose. Rey will be with Leia and everyone in the bunker. Then Luke shows up just like the real movie. And instead of just Leia kissing Luke goodbye and giving her the dice, let's also have a scene where Rey says to Luke, Master Skywalker, you're back. Luke then will wink at her and smile, and then Rey gives him the Skywalker lightsaber, and he carries it into battle. If the scene were real, 
It would have been the third attempt that Ray tries to give the lightsaber to Luke. And third times the charm, similar to how this is my third attempt at making a hit Star Wars video. Anyway, so yeah, I guess the lightsaber itself will be real. And if this happens, the lightsaber will be Kylo's since when Luke's force apparition disappears, it will drop on the ground. And then Kylo will be happy he got the lightsaber he wanted so much. That lightsaber... It belongs to me. And when he bleeds it and makes it red and uses it in the next movie, it'll be very great. But that's getting way off topic. Anyways, a scene where Rey finally hands the lightsaber to Luke felt sorely missing in The Last Jedi. And I think adding it would have made the audience feel more happier. Because Luke's character arc in the movie will feel more complete. I just wish we had more screen time focusing on Luke's character arc in the movie by getting rid of the shitty jokes and casino scenes. We had a long movie from the start. <laughs> It was, it was well over three hours, the first cut. A lot of really good stuff came out in the edit. About his mother. I feel like the cut is what it is because I feel like it's the best version in the movie. Do you stand by all your choices? Nope, stand by every choice. Part 2, making Luke's death more plausible and meaningful. Now let's talk about Luke's ultimate fate in the movie by addressing number 2 and 3. Him dying because of playing Half-Life Alex on his Oculus Rift, and him dying to save only a handful of people. Luke sacrificing himself so that Leia and the Resistance can survive is a noble death, but it still feels like his death felt unnecessary. Also, making a doppelganger image is such a hard task that it kills him? What? Look, I'm not against Luke dying in this movie, but it feels like he should have died from a more plausible reason. And dying so that old grandma and her friends can survive seems like a stupid death. I want Luke's sacrifice in the movie to mean something more. But before I discuss how I'll change the story, here's something I want to talk about first. What is a Jedi, or at least what should a Jedi try to be? A great warrior? Great warrior? War is not make one great! A soldier? We're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. No, Jedi's are peacekeepers, beings trying to protect the innocent and helping the weak. In other words, to me, Jedi's are space superheroes, a symbol of peace and justice using their power for good to lead them into a better tomorrow. The Jedi use their power for good. The Jedi are selfless. They only care about others. And Sith who use their power for themselves are like supervillains. The Sith rely on their passion for their strength. They think inwards, only about themselves. And what are superheroes supposed to do? Inspire people, make them hope. So what I'm saying is, I want Luke's sacrifice to be inspiring to other people. You know that line in Rogue One? You're asking us to invade an Imperial installation based on nothing but hope. Rebellions are built on hope. I know it's corny as fuck in that movie, but it's true. People of the galaxy are afraid to revolt against the Forced Order. They've heard us. But no one's coming. They need to be inspired by someone to rebel against and topple a fascist regime. I also want to talk more about the scene in the final episode of The Mandalorian Season 2. What I love about that scene is not just because of the fan service of Luke using his green lightsaber finally, but because of the reaction on Moff Gideon's face when Luke appears. Moff Gideon during the entire show has been smug. You're about to face off with the dark troopers. You had your hands full with one. Let's see how you do against the platoon. And knowing everything. Friendly piece of advice. Assume that I know everything. But the mere presence, the symbol of a Jedi appearing is enough to make him scared shitless and even tries to commit Sudoku. This scene just reaffirms my theory that Jedis are more like superheroes because Moff Gideon is like a Batman villain being terrified by the mere presence of Batman. Jedis are gonna be the symbolism of hope in the galaxy like Ryan tried to convey with the broom kid scene. Luke's heroic sacrifice seems to have inspired Poe and the people of the Resistance. No, Fight. no, 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 we are the spark that'll light the fire that'll burn the First Order down. Skywalker's doing this so we can survive. But my problem is, there are only like a dozen people who witness Luke's sacrifice. What's the point of the sacrifice if only so few people are there to witness it? Because of this, Luke looks like he almost died for nothing. So here's how I'm gonna fix it. Can we fix it? Luke's sacrifice will be witnessed by more people, and so the Gallus can truly revolt against the First Order. Here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna rip off the excellent animated movie, Superman vs. the Elite. 
in Superman vs. the Elite, Superman has to face off these dog heroes who think killing villains is good. To prove a point that he's right, he tricks them by pretending to be violent like them, to show them why they're wrong. You killed my team! Look at this place! Chester, I thought you were supposed to be the sharp one. Boys? Similar to how Luke tricks Kylo by pretending to be on Crate in The Last Jedi. However, unlike Luke, Superman makes sure his actions are seen through cameras all over the world so that he can prove he is right and inspire everyone on Earth. Yes, they did see. They saw the ugliness of violence as a solution and it frightened them. So in my version of TLJ, alongside the lightsaber, Leia is also gonna give Luke like a camera, or since this is Star Wars, a hologram recorder. So the entire confrontation with Kylo on Crate will be broadcasted on the Star Wars equivalent of the internet or something. Yes, you heard me right. Luke is gonna literally stream the movie all over the galaxy. You might think this is a bit over the top, but I think it'll be poetic because a hologram recording of Leia started Luke's journey and a hologram recording of himself would be his final act. Again, it's like poetry, so sort if of they rhyme, mm -hmm. every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Hopefully it'll work. I guess we can make the signal beacon thing that Leia and Rey use also have the feature to record and broadcast holograms. Also, you know that dumbass scene in Rise of Skywalker where Lando somehow brings thousands of ships into the last battle on Exegol without any explanation? How the hell did he manage to do that? Wasn't the galaxy afraid of the First Order or Final Order? I don't think Lando telling everyone in the galaxy to buy a Colt 45 is gonna boost morale, when the other side has star destroyers that can destroy planets for some fucking reason. God, Rise of Skywalker was stupid. Ahem, anyways, in my version of Last Jedi, it will be Luke's heroic sacrifice that motivates those people to join the final battle. It will also give room for explanation of how the hell did they get back a fleet in the next movie, so we can now say the galaxy just donated a lot of starships after witnessing the heroic death of Luke. It seems my big brain idea is so good it fixes plot holes even in the next movie. Then, instead of Luke just disappearing, I think we need to have Luke do something so that the First Order seems weak and fallible. I first thought about Luke suddenly using all of his Will of the Force to make all the AT-ATs or ADAS on Crate explode and kill everyone in the First Order including Hux. But there were some excellent videos on the internet explaining why Luke should never use violence, because Luke's character arc in The Return of the Jedi was realizing he needs to give up his weapon in the end to defeat Vader and the Emperor. And I do agree. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So I guess instead of killing everyone, Luke is gonna use the Force to break every single leg of the AT-ATs and wings of the shuttle spaceships on Crate, so that everyone in the First Order will be stranded on that planet. So Luke will be like the reverse of Palpatine in the next movie, where he shoots lightning up in the sky that disables all resistance ships, except there will be no electricity, and it will be done through telekinesis. This will not kill anyone, but it will give enough time for the Resistance to escape, embarrass Kylo enough so that his leadership in the First Order will be shaken, and the galaxy will fight against the First Order since they will now believe they can fight back when they have a Jedi who has that kind of insane power, that being Rey, on their side. And dying after doing such a feat seems like a more plausible death than I die from rendering a 3D model of myself. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. The generators will power things through switches that require power, lights and other items. And then you run wires that connect them all. And it, again, it, it just works. Anyways, making Luke act more like a superhero, giving him an opportunity to show off his power, having his sacrifice scenes throughout the galaxy will be poetic, make his death more plausible, and mean more significance for Rey and the heroes. But even if after all the fixes I presented, if you still think it is out of character for Luke to even consider thinking about killing his nephew, I can't help you. If you don't think the post-Return of the Jedi Luke can fail in anything whatsoever because he is more perfect than Jesus Christ, I don't think any narrative changes will convince you to think otherwise. That being said, The Last Jedi and the entire sequel trilogy in general feels like a lot of wasted opportunity. 
All the movies, even The Rise of Skywalker, had some real good ideas and potential and Mark Hamill gave the performance of his lifetime in the movie. He might not have liked the story, but he was still a damn great actor. Anyways, I hope you like my ideas. A hopeful glimpse into a parallel Earth where The Last Jedi was loved by everyone, there was no coronavirus, and Michael Jackson was still alive. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if this video does well, I'll make more videos about fixing the sequel trilogy.